Well, we're on this little mini series that we started last week. It's kind of fun. I'm having a ball. I hope you're getting something out of this. We, uh, we asked the question, uh, what direction are you headed? I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional, okay? And uh, we found out that it has to do with following your nose. I told you that training a horse, when you pull that horse's nose, it's going to follow its nose. It's going to find that direction by the way you pull the nose. Well, it's the same thing with us. We need to see where our nose is pointed, and we'll have a better understanding of the direction we're going. If our nose is always on this horizontal plane, then we're always looking to the things of the world. You and I need to look up, and that was the first one that we talked about last week on Monday. Look up. Why? Because Jesus is coming. Remember uh, our uh, reference uh, scripture is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Okay, a time is coming. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Our eternal life with him in God's kingdom is coming. And so what is more important? To secure everything here on earth and make sure it's all right and you know our houses are nice our trucks and our cars and our horses are everything or should we be preparing for what's coming and that is Jesus splitting the eastern skies and coming for his church amen so some people say oh you're too spiritual you know you're so um, uh, heavenly minded that you're no earthly good well praise God that's the way I want to be I want to be ready when Jesus comes. I want to hear him say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom that I prepared especially for you. Amen. So we said, first of all, we need to look up. Then we need to wake up. Then we need to grow up. Then we need to dress up. Then we need to build up. Then we need to gird up. Then we need to stir up. And today, we're going to learn to shut up. Are you ready for me? We're going to learn to shut up. Listen to this. Proverbs. Chapter 13, verse 3, says, He who guards his mouth preserves his life. Now, folks, this is a cowboy no-brainer. You can sit here and try and rationalize this out, but it's pretty simple. It's cowboy simple. Listen to it again. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens uh, wide his lips shall have destruction. So, in other words, we need to put a guard on our mouth. We need to make sure that the things that we speak are things that line up with the Word of God and line up with the principles that govern the kingdom of God. Do I need to say that again? We need to put a guard on our lips so we only speak those things that are from the Word of God and are a part of the kingdom of God. Why? Well, listen to this. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life is in the power of the tongue? Well, sure it is. Think about it. You could go up in a grocery store and go up to the cashier there, and you could say, Boy, uh, lovely day, isn't it? And you're so nice looking. I mean, you're doing a great job and pat them on the back and boy, you just made their day. Or you could go up and cuss that person and say, what's wrong with you? It's taken forever and you could carry on and you could ruin their days. As a matter of fact, the Bible even says in James, it says that um, the tongue will set on fire the course of nature. We don't want to do that. We do not want to destroy somebody's life with our tongue. So we need to shut up. And we need to guard our lips. Let's read on. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says, For he, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Now remember a couple days ago we talked about the fact that God looks upon the hearts of men. Here it says, as we think in our hearts, so are we. Now watch this in Matthew chapter 12 verse 34. It says, um, now let's just jump down to... Uh, uh, yeah, verse 34. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So remember, we just found out in Proverbs, it says, as we think in our heart, so are we. And then out of the abundance of our mouth, we speak. Listen to what it goes on to say. Uh, verse tw uh, 36. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. 
For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So we ought to put a trap on this mouth. We ought to shut up and begin to only speak those things that bring glory and honor to our Father, that only speak that line, things that line up with this word and bring glory and honor to the kingdom of God. So let's do it today. Let's shut up. I'm going to do that right now. Hey, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.